please note, I am not affiliated with Instant Workstation in any way and I receive no reward for highlighting their services. But I am open to chocolate biscuits. The best way to try FreeBSD or a FreeBSD derived operating system is to put in a live DVD such as GhostBSD or NomadBSD that makes no changes to your host system. You could try a virtual machine, but if you don't fancy doing that, then here's a solution I found for you via your own web browser. Right, we're on the Instant Workstation gallery page, I suppose you could call that, and you get quite a selection on instantworkstation.com. Different operating systems, different makes, and as you can see, there's Aros, Android, uh, various Linuxes, uh, Dragonfly BSD, Debian, FreeBSD, FreeDOS, GhostBSD, and Haiku. And there's quite a few more. There's Hardened BSD and a few more Linuxes. Uh, go Open BSD was there. NetBSD. That's Open Indiana, which is uh, nice to see. Some more Linux. Reactos. And yeah, it's quite a quite an eclectic mix. It's good to see quite a few uh, BSDs there, representing the BSD corner. Hey. But before we have a look at that, let's have a look at what the Instant Workstation site offers us. Of course, you've got the Virtual Machine Gallery, as you see there. You've got features, and as it says at the bottom, it says not all features listed above are available on every single virtual machine due to OS limitations. That's true. And there's a look at the security, show you how everything is uh, set up and start a virtual machine and connect into a virtual machine. Uh, nice and comprehensive. So if you have a look at pricing, now this may be a contentious issue. You've got x86. There's no 64 bit yet, I don't think. You've got ARM and RISC-V. You've got four virtual CPU cores, 12 gigabytes of RAM. You could file, upload and download from virtual machines. There's no internet access in the virtual machines in the free version. There's no persistent storage and priority during times of congestion may be given to those who pay. Um, talking about the pay, you get the same choice of architecture and file upload, but also you get internet access in virtual machines, persistent storage of virtual machines, and priority during times of congestion. In order to store virtual machines, you can I think you can have up to four uh, if you're not paying, if it's free. You can store virtual machines if you register and there's a contact address if you want to get in touch with them. So for me, I'm going to just quickly register. There's no other details over the username, email and password. That's it. And once we registered and logged in, you get access to your virtual machines where you can store them. Uh, I haven't at the moment, but we'll we'll change that in a minute. Right, so let's get back to the virtual machines. And the first one that we're going to have a look at, of course, it's going to have to be FreeBSD. FreeBSD 14.0, so it's uh, up to date. There's various terms and conditions you may wish to read. There's quite a few there. But seeing as we're using the free version, you know, there's very little data we put in that can be used. And you could have a read of this, of course. You can take your time. You can scroll down. It's not really gobbledygook, as some terms and policies can be, but you may want to give it a read if you wish, especially if you're thinking of using this uh, in a more serious capacity. That's never a bad thing to do anyway. Right, so when you're ready, just click that. And the top left-hand corner, it shows you the virtual machine you're on. And we're loading up FreeBSD, of course. On the right, you've got some basic controls on the right-hand side of the screen. And because there's a desktop environment already installed, in this case it's KDE, it logs straight in. And there we go. Full of functioning FreeBSD session. It's a little bit laggy. There's a little bit of delay in the in the cursor movement, but it's not too bad. Maybe that's down to my internet connection. Maybe it's down to my computer. So on the right-hand side, you've got the uh, GUI selection. You can click that. Click the terminal to put you straight into the terminal mode. And we'll just have a quick look at Uname. It's 14.0, patch set zero, so it uh, hasn't been upgraded or updated yet. Uh, let's have a look at your storage device. 
and there's no uh, it's not opening there. Some information about the install, how to access files and folders with your SMB client. That's to switch your virtual machine off and that's to delete your virtual machine. So I'll go back to the GUI and there we go. So you get a basic install, nothing fancy, just basic KDE. And yeah, there's nothing of surprise here. It's all very nice and clean plasma. So yeah, it's good. It's um, it's, It feels snappy, surprisingly. There's like saying the movement of the things is a little bit of lag, but everything else feels surprisingly uh, snappy. So you could use this. It depends. You may want a more local uh, virtual machine, maybe if your system is beefy enough. But if you don't, then this might be an alternative. Right, so we're going to try another one. We'll try GhostBSD. And you get through the usual start virtual machine option. And let's have a look what GhostBSD can give us. Now, GhostBSD is a longtime favorite of mine. If you want an instant uh, experience with a GUI using FreeBSD, because essentially it is FreeBSD underneath the hood. And, but because we've got no internet access, again, the experience is going to be slightly limited. You won't be able to go online with this. And uh, so that does limit us rather. And it logs straight in. If you're not sure what to do next, it took me a while to find out. Uh, it's an empty password that you put in. You know, you just press enter. But if you're ever unsure, just press I and it'll give you some information on the virtual machine. And it tells you there, this machine has issues with mouse cursor. Um, it's an empty password. So it tells you sometimes if you're, if you're stuck for uh, what to do next, which is... Uh, so what I usually get. Yeah, there is some issue with the mouse cursor. You do have to move it off screen slightly. But we'll have a look at what's installed. And again, just like the KDE version on FreeBSD, you got your very basics. And this is a, a basic GhostBSD install. A lot of Mate tools. There are some extras like Firefox, but uh, it's not going to do as much good in this particular case. And there's a memory usage. It's QEMU is the virtual machine. Very nice. FreeBSD 13.2 in this particular case. So yeah, it's uh, it's GhostBSD. So I know that this is not an in-depth review. It's just really highlighting that you've got FreeBSD and GhostBSD and a few other BSDs. But I thought I'd show you. It's an interesting concept, and I don't think it's been very. It's it's been going that long. Uh, I don't know how many people are behind the project. I don't know uh, any of the names. I don't really know much details. If anyone knows anything about them, then I'll be interested to find out. But, you know, it's an interesting idea. And I think it will be an ideal way for people to try out various BSDs. Pre-configured, of course, but to try them out. What a great idea that is. Anyway, I hope this was of some interest. If you like the video, please press that like button. If you really like it, then please consider subscribing and click that notification bell if you do, so you don't miss out on any videos that I release. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Okay.